Okay, welcome back to the Rookie and the Vet. Uh, this podcast is going to start a little bit differently today. We're uh, we're going to cut a little bit shorter. We're going to um, take away a few few of the reviews. Uh, have you boys been doing the reviews as well? I yeah, think you and I, I did one the other day, didn't I you? I did it Monday morning, so I think yeah, we'll, um, we'll just rip straight in. Yeah, beautiful. Been, Get yeah. straight into it, and we're gonna, you know you wanted to take away the gratefuls, but mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to one part of the grateful. One of the Guys, and it's almost like a support thing. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to do it on all three podcasts today. We're going to go see the Warriors boys today. We're going to talk about it on 10 of the can. We want to get as much awareness to this as possible, and that is to support one of our own, Mossy Masso, over in the Super League. He played for the Dragons and Roosters over here, I believe. Uh, I've met him a couple of times. One of the scariest players on the field, but a really good guy off the field. Uh, he had a, a really bad neck injury last year. Uh, this round, the the round over in the UK is dedicated to him. So a uh, big love to Mossy. Um, we'll we'll put up some links in that today in, in in this podcast. And if you're part of the rugby league community and you support our players, please get behind Mossy. Donate as much as little or as much as you want. Um, like I said, a really good guy, Jacko. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. It's a obviously what he's going through is is not new news to anyone but um i think if, fuck if we can do anything and it and it raises a dollar um yeah, it's worth doing, bro so yeah by all accounts again i've never met him never spoken to him professionally or anything like that but you can't find anyone who has a bad word to say yeah, about he's him a big unless, teddy he's, bear. unless he's ran over top of them so yeah he's a big teddy yeah <laughs> off the back fence off yeah, kickoffs fuck you, me, you dude. kick away from him but <laughs> yeah yeah trying to trying to support him as much as we can obviously there are insurance uh things that are put in place mm-hmm. so overseas um, the insurance takes care of the the in, like uh, looking after the the medical details and all that stuff. But um, yeah, Mossy's physically not going to be able to do a lot of things that he would normally be able to do uh, life after footy. So if we can help support his family, he's got a couple of kids. I met his family, I met his missus and his and his kids. One of my good mates, Walla Iraqi, reached out to me. He played with him at Salford, so uh, at Hull KR. So mm-hmm. um, big love to Mossy, uh, and we'll roll straight into the show. Let's go. So uh, you're. Uh, I failed again on uh, – we're struggling with the multi of doom. We're struggling. So Thursday, you, Thursday night. You do uh, your best work on a Thursday. Yeah. The multis of doom have been a bit of a struggle. But, um, yeah, I think I think you'll like what i got this week. Okay, and I think you'll like what I've got and we'll roll straight into it. So yeah. uh, I've sent you the the uh, the multi nighter. for Thursday night multi. Mm. Can we get the lineups as we're going too, please, Lukey? Um, it's in this game. Obviously, the Panthers play my bird gang – I'll touch on a little bit about the Bird Gang as we talk about this, but they're in for another tough day. This is going to be – This oh, I feel like this is going to get ugly again. Cleary comes back into the team. My Thursday night multi is – it's very hard to find any value in this game because obviously how people think this is going to, game's going to go. But I think there's going to be a fair bit of try, a fair few tries and, and it's not going to be from the Bird Gang. So I have gone for my multi – uh, Charlie Staines did a number on the Bird Gang, I believe, last year. I think he's going to score another one. Brian Toto's been scoring tries for fun. He missed last week with a couple of uh, his big big toe on the mm-hmm. line or, or whatnot. And uh, and that that right edge, uh, which is led by one of my good mates, uh, Ches, is just struggling at the moment. Um, defensively. Yeah. Defensively, yeah. They're, they're all over the shop. Um yeah, they're just not on the the same page. I, I, I like kick out as well. You know, I've, I've been liking. We've talked about forwards scoring tries with the new rules because. The momentum is going so much, so much quicker and it's almost just like a little short pass that Mudders put on for Tarek Sims last year where they go straight through. I think something like that can happen against uh, Manly again this week. So my Thursday night multi of doom is Viliami Kikau, Charlie Staines and Brian Toto. How yeah. do you see this game going, mate? Yeah, I think uh, pretty similar to you, Matt. I think Penrith put a probably put a bit of a score on them. I think I don't think it's going to be as big a blowout. Like I, I've seen people talking in, somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to 30 points. I'm not so sure. I think Manly are going to, at some point, they're going to stiffen up defensively. My thing with Manly is um, without Tommy Turbo, which, you know, Ice and I spoke about on Monday, you and I spoke about last week, it, it, their attack is completely different. And Dylan Walker's a nice player, but it's just that, that they play a completely different style of game. So I don't see a shitload of points in Manly at the moment. Um, so I think Penrith will run away with it. Picking three try scorers is fucking hard in any game, but I think you're pretty close to on the money in this one. Um, I think you, Charlie Staines definitely. I think that's that's easy money. Brian Toto is like you said, he's scoring them for fun and and kick out. I think they will because uh, you're going to have is it Matt Burton's out, out at centre there because they've moved um, credit to fullback. So whether or not you know he's such a nice silky player. He might be he might be able to just keep setting up his outside men, so maybe they go past kick out. But I think that's that's pretty good value. They also kick a lot to him, and with Cleary back in, it's it's good value. So I like it, bro. I think Penrith put a bit of a score on them. Um, 
yeah, I don't know by how much, but I think I think it's going to be more competitive than people think. And just before we jump off, manly mate, young boy here, Josh Schuster, um, in the back row, he's nice, man. So he's you know, in what's been a pretty rough start to the year, I think he's been a bit of a not a new find because he played last year, but um, he looks silky, man. Loves a little um, loves a little no look pass as well, which I love. He reminds me a bit of Filetti Mateo. Yeah, so, yeah, so he's got that where he can skillful. play six and play back row. The only thing is. He said he's played a bit of back row in the past. It's going to take him a while to get the juice under his legs. You can see he had mm. some nice little touches last week, and, and when he gets his ball in the hands. The only thing is, my one concern is knowing the boys really well as well. I think he's more suited to playing with Cherry than he is with Foz because Foz yep. loves those back rows that run a, a real t- like you know straight, straight line. line, straight line, and it's probably not Schuster's bread and butter, whereas Cherry in the past has played really well with Jimmy Bura and Glenn Stewart on the right edge. Remember back in those days, that's where Ches did his best work because sometimes Ches would just get the ball, see, you know, with the width of it, just let shoot it out and give Schuster a bit of time to play. So um, I don't know if it's something that they'll think about because, yeah, if it looks like Desi's going to stick with keeping Schuster in the back row, you know, maybe they flip it over. But And another little adjustment too that I think might happen for the other side, you've, they've named Matt Burton at uh, centres. Mm. I think... This, and I've got no information about this, but just looking at that squad, I reckon they'll. I reckon Critter, because he's played fullback in the past, will defend at fullback. But I reckon when it comes to attack, I reckon he'll flip and play in the centres as Ooh, per. I like that. And Burton will sweep. Will, Burton will be the sweeper. Oh, so fuck, I like that. Uh, we'll pay attention to that. See if that plays out the way it is. That's a, a sort of uh, a way. A way I think you still get the best out of. You could, you know, potentially when Tyrone May comes on again, you, you've again got two really good. You know, if you've got – just say if they sit Cleary on the right edge, I think Tyra May tends to float to the left a little bit he more does, with yeah. Jerome, and then you might have Burton flipping on that right-hand you know, side. Four, so four playmakers out there. I, I'm one of those guys I think it's going to be 20-plus. Okay. It was uh, – it was I'm like I say all the time, I'm, I'm you know, everyone knows I'm bird gang and, and support the boys, but at the moment they just look lost, mate, like across the board. Uh, it's very hard to uh, – you know, stick up for me, mates, and it's they get if they put in a performance this week. You know that that's when you can. You know, you you said you're you're thinking think, they might uh, put in a performance. Yeah, when I say put in a performance, I, they will lose. I think Penrith will beat them, um, but I think they're gonna like last last week. I said they're gonna stand up defensively because it's manly and they're they're due. Yeah. And I think this could be it. Um, like I wouldn't be surprised if it's quite even quite close at the half, and maybe Penrith blow them out late. Okay. Um, but yeah, like we're, we're both on Penrith here. I, I like your three try scorers in the multi of doom and. Um, you're two and one on Thursday nights, which is not bad. Not a yeah. bad start to the year. So I'll be jumping on, man. Yeah, I, t- I took my time a little bit. We asked for it yesterday, and we spoke. Yeah, you about wanted it last a bit, you wanted a bit of time. That was yeah, I good. wanted a bit of time. I want to make sure I do it on Thursday morning. It gets out a little bit later to the mag, but uh, one thing, like I said on, on the show before the game had even played, the one thing I was worried about, uh, even though both scorers didn't somehow didn't score, <laughs> yeah. um, I would never would have gone the overs in that game once I knew Cleary and, and Pappy, Pappy were out. So as as of Nine o'clock this morning. I believe the the lineups are staying the same. So cool. I'm happy with that play. On to the next game. Friday night, baby. Friday night, and very short price price favourites to start start all all three games. Yeah, was it sevens there? Um, Bulldogs haven't scored a point in a minute, Jacko. Two games. Yeah, I, I said it last week. It's the same thing. Unfortunately, I I like the fact that Nick Meaney's gone back to fullback. I think he's a little bit more creative than Corey Allen. Corey Allen's a very powerful ball runner. Um, but they're obviously trying something. So you 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 know you like that they're actually having a crack and trying something different. Um, unfortunately, and Lockie Lewis is obviously back in for uh, Avarillo, the man that you can't pronounce. So um, I think the bunnies. Too silky, too good. I think they'll put a bit of a score on them um, somewhere. Yeah, it'll be it'll be thirteen plus. Just purely, uh, with no disrespect to the Bulldogs' defense, um, I, they they just can't score points at the moment. I don't know if Lockie Lewis and Nick Meaney and that and a bit of that spine shake up does a lot um, in terms of the way of changing their whole attack. But Lockie Lewis is a he's a he's a good defender. He kicks the ball well and he's a fucking goer. So um, hopefully it sparks something in them and and you see at least a try out of the boys. Um, but I think I think South's run away with it. Yeah, same again, mate. This is a for all the three teams that are struggling. They're coming up against yeah. teams that you just don't want to be playing. They've all uh, drawn a real. And you know, I've, I've spoke about this a few, a few times at the start of the year in particular. I was like, this is week four. Like this is when you know. So if if that either of these two teams in particular, Bird Gang and Bulldogs, because Broncos are playing. I think the next game Broncos versus Storm. They yeah. they managed to scrape together a win. This is if 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 they don't put, they don't have to win, 
if they don't put in a respectable performance, long year. That's when everyone starts looking around. Like you start going into the sheds and you start looking around at each other. So they need to they need to show something here. The Bulldogs. I don't think they are. I think this is going to be another twenty plus game. Yeah. Like I said, the value wasn't good enough for it to, mm. to be betting on anything like that. So I've left this one out of the multi as well, just because yeah, it's it's you're, you're you're chasing odds. You'd have to go something pretty sure. outlandish to get a bit of. It, it bit might of even just be try scorers again. Like yeah. if you're having a play in this game as well, go left, man. Go <laughs> left. Go left again. You, you're looking at Alex Johnson. I like his chances. I like uh, Walker's been scoring for fun. Yeah. I like Even it. Cookie through the middle. I think the Bulldogs, uh, you know, they, they have such a big pack with the way this game's going. And, you know, Ice and I spoke about um, on Monday having a little bit of like, we just want to see what would happen if you put 50 bucks on every single hooker to score a try. Yeah. Um, just because they keep scoring them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what the investment would be there, but um, like, I think I think Cookie's a real chance in this one as well. Cam Murray, any of those guys with legs be through the middle against teams like the Bulldogs and even my beloved Warriors with the big packs um, and these new rules, I think there's a bit of value there, but I'd be leaving it alone. Yeah, I'd be leaving it alone. I think South, again, around that 20 mark, I think it's going to be uh, a bit of a blow. I just I haven't seen enough. Yeah, I was a bit of a supporter for, for the Bulldogs at the start of the year, and so I thought I. they could be do floating you, around. But Does the does the mix-up with Meany and, and Lockie Lewis do anything for you? You've got to wait and I, see. I actually it. don't like it. No. I, I'd prefer, like, even though that hasn't been happening, um, I would have preferred to – it just doesn't impress me yeah. one bit. So um, Nick, Meany, yeah, think, Nick Meany's got skill. Like in terms of – if you're ch- like for a side that um, like I'm kind of with you, it doesn't do a lot for me. But mm. a team that is literally hasn't scored a point and now back to back weeks, throwing someone like Nick Meaney at fullback versus someone like Corey Allen, Meaney's got that game breaker ability. He's not as you know Corey Allen's very reliable, strong under the high ball, good carry, and Nick Meaney doesn't have those qualities. But he can genuinely split you through the middle and, and gut team. So maybe they're they're just trying to throw a little bit of something back there and. and See what happens. See what happens. So right. I, don't, I don't mind it, but yeah, south of, south of Dawn. We will see what happens. All right, next game, Broncos versus Storm. Yeah, um, another one. Look, we've we got three pretty short-priced. Um, I tell you what, Melbourne don't lose two in a row very often. They sure as fuck don't lose three in a row. It's so an ugly time to be playing it's a, Melbourne. It's a horrible time to be playing Melbourne. It's in Melbourne as well, right? They yep, didn't, they didn't move that one? Yep, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, did they come up today? Can you confirm that? But oh, it wouldn't matter anyway for me. It doesn't, if I was doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do. There is, uh, yeah, yeah. There, it's an, it's the it's the Queensland teams that have come down and moved their games. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's at Amy Park. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want to play them right now. Um, Broncos will take will take a bit of confidence out of the fact they they got to win. Um, yep. And you know, you you were saying last week you like that right edge, man. They they good. There's a nice there's nice players there. Yeah. Um, still waiting for Pretty Ricky to get over and score a try. Come on, baby. I jump on him every week. Come on, boy. Um, but yeah, I think Melbourne Melbourne will do this one. Um. And I think there's value in some of the try scorers there, which I might have I might have slipped into the multi of doom as well. So, um, yeah, I, Melbourne will do it for me. This is this is the one game though. I think like it's an ugly time to play Melbourne, but if it gets a bit tricky at the start of the game and Broncos are feeling themselves a little bit because they got a win last week, they can feel that Melbourne are nervous because Melbourne haven't been playing Melbourne footy as well. Like, mm. if you look back on it though, in you know, I've got mad respect for Justin Olam. He's he's one of the the better centers in the competition, but he's made a couple of really bad decisions at the end of both games. He's got he's got a bit of a clangor in him from time to time. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we look back. Me and Simi were talking about round one. He plays the ball sideways, and South bring, brings him back into the game, and he does fucking everything else is a everything ten else. out of ten. Yeah. Like yeah. the rest of the game, but he has that blunder. He kicks on the second tackle against Parramatta with thirty seconds to go, and obviously he's got to make that pass. Yeah, so. Uh, On top of that, he scores three tries, has a million fucking and, tackle breaks, and, 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 and just jams ruins <laughs> people for fun. So, yeah. you know, yeah, um, if, you if remember, Big Payne Haas is back too, yeah, that's that's a big Big Payne Haas is back, mm. and then you know the the bench looks a little bit stronger now because Tavita goes Tavita Pangai Junior goes to the bench. So, like I said, man, this this is, this is one like a bit how you you think it might be Manly Penrith. I think it might be pretty close to half time. Yeah, and then. Uh, I, this is one game where I'd, I think I'd be taking the points mm. on the Broncos, but interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, well, what is the spread? It'd be about. What? It'd be close to eleven. No, nah, maybe more, bro. Like, if, more. how much are they paying? Nine bucks. I reckon it'd probably be around fifteen or sixteen. Yeah, okay. Um, Lukey will be looking at that as we as we keep talking, but we both see Storm winning, mate. Yeah, I see Storm winning. I, I like what you're saying. Like, I, I think again, you know, you'd know more than me, but. Put, 
for me, just playing Melbourne and Melbourne off the back of two losses. It sucks. It's, it that sucks. sucks. That, that'd suck. So, especially for a team who have just got that first win. And then they get Pappy back too. And they get Pappy back. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think it could be a bit of a long night for them. But I like the idea of it being a bit closer at the half. Um, minus, minus 20. 20? Yeah, I'll, I'd take 20. I'd, I'd probably take 20 as I'd well. I'd take 20 on that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You might have you might have swayed me there. I would have said 20 plus until you started talking. So yep. um, there you go. If you're chasing a bit of value, plus 20 might be all right. Yep. Sammy, Sammy, what do you reckon, bro? Uh, what's this for, sorry? Uh, plus 20 oh. for the Broncos. Do you think uh, they're going to keep it half close or? Um, yeah, I do. I believe they will. Yeah. Why? Um, well, I don't know if you guys seen the interview with Jordan Ricky recently. Um, I think he started a – a bit of a trend there with a the new attitude coming towards the, the season. Yep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, shout out to pretty. Oh, no, we, I think we said last week he just signed, re signed for three years. Yeah, Congrats three to years. our boy, Pretty Ricky. Buddy. Again, bro. Get your um, bread, boy. <laughs> so, you know, um, I think he just, I think he stood up and just said, you know, we need to change, uh, change what's going on in the club and everyone's. Come to the table with a new, uh, new energy and new attitude. So you know what? That's really good stuff. It works. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk more footy tonight on Ten of the Kent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, on to the next game. Saturday. Who starts the Saturday? Super Saturday. Super Saturday. Um, Luke's getting it up. Luke, you'll get it up for us. I'll tell you what. There's, get my tips up too. Actually. There's some. Um, some. It, it's going to be an easy one for the old ESPN tips. I reckon this one. Um, there we go. Cowboys Sharks. Yep. Cowboys Sharks. I made, I made Titans my best bet of the week last week, and that's saluted pretty easily. Sharks are my best bet of the week, actually. Are the, they? Yeah. Okay. A dollar thirty-five is not not amazing odds, but um, it's good enough to to get them as my sort of best bet. Uh, in the oh, so season. my my best bets as well. They've been with the line. So you remember I took the Sharks minus four and a half, yep. and then I took I thought I said Titans were going to do a number on yep. go through the middle against Cowboys. And, you did say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think. Basically, every game that the Cowboys are missing, um, Talmalolo is, is going to be an uphill, and, an uphill slog for them. Uh, and it even saluted because by the t- when we first did it, I didn't know the news about Michael Morgan as well. So by the time we got to Sunday, I think Friday, Saturday, we found out about Michael Morgan. I was like, even more so. They're throwing like, Benny Hampton in at seven there. I'm, I might have missed something. I'm not too sure what's uh, happening with Jake Clifford. But um, yeah, again, kind of it smells a little bit like the old Nick Meany move. They're, they're throwing in someone else. Because they they're struggling for points. Clifford twenty one. There you go. So he's just he's just been moved back, um, and he's on his way to the Bulldogs next year as well. Jake Cl- ah he Newcastle. Is. Sorry, I think he's Newcastle. there was rumours that he's uh, looking at backflipping now because of the the news that's happened to Michael Morgan. Oh yeah, tried to compete for it. Yeah, um, doesn't look good when Benny uh, Hampton. Nah, Benny Hampton's in there. So yeah, I think uh, this this is a it's a good game for for the Sharks to sort of not play themselves back into form because they haven't been out of form, but um, I, I think they'll I think they'll get the job done here. Um, and I love the fact that like big Toby Rudolph just moves to lock and gets to bang up the middle. So I think I think they'll dominate them through the pack. A uh, bit of bit of value. I think Braden Hamlin Ueli is due. He's a try scoring prop of fucking doom, and he hasn't really crossed uh, this year. So I think he could be a bit of jam there. The Cowboys have been leaking some points through the middle. So um, I'll be looking for for Braley to sort of play something through the middle there, and, and maybe the big fella crashes over crashes over late. Um, if you're a real value chaser, he's always he he loves himself a last try scorer. Braden Hamlin, you when he yep. comes on for that last little 15 stint the end, yep. 10, 15. So that's where I'll be going. You've got to think about the Sharks, you know, they're battling away and they're, they're winning games. They're still missing their best player in Sean mm-hmm. Johnson. Yep. They're still missing uh, Talakai, who yep. I think is their most damaging ball runner. Yep. So there, there's pieces ask to come. Ask Peter Hickel about it last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you can. You can yeah, ask him yeah I will ask him today. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and and there, there's, a, there's a lot more to come into this side who haven't been playing their best football. I think they – um, can kind of play themselves into a bit of form in this game, and I think it's going to be a long season for the So you're, are you going best bet just head-to-head, or would you, are you confident head. with, with this taken be, away? I, I would I be dare confident. say I'd be giving away six and a half, maybe six eight and a half. half. I'd be very comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. it might be seven and a half. Um, I'd be very comfortable taking the line on that. I think they're probably doing by by somewhere in the ballpark of 12 to 18 points. So, um, yeah. So yeah, like you said, some of these are pretty straightforward. I, I, yeah, I can't really see the Cowboys – uh, doing anything after last week's performances, but you know it was pretty fair hiding. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm tipping the sharks as well. There you go. Uh, the next one is Titans versus Raiders. Yeah, this. So I think we get here. We kind of get. From, we go from sort of easy, not easy bets, but yep. The last three ones. Of, yeah. Of, into into a couple of dare I say coin flips here. Um, 
I'll launch off here, mate, just because I know you love your Titans and I've been I've been a bit hard on the boys lately, but they, they played fucking good football um, up there last week. And Canberra probably – <laughs> Canberra probably should have um, should have been. What did I say boys. about the Tigers, man? <laughs> yeah, you did. I mean, you did. Uh, oh no, sorry. The uh, well, that's uh, that's with the Newcastle, yeah, game, the Newcastle sorry. game. But they, they should have beaten my boys, the Raiders. Yeah. Um, you know that. Yeah, they had no one on the bench. Yeah. by the end of it, uh, they got they got they got pipped by Roger and the boys, which I'm very grateful for. I was very happy to lose money on that. But this is a mate. I'll be very interested to see where you go with this game. I'm gonna I'll be leaning towards Canberra, um, but uh, the the Gold Coast. If they play like that, if they play that sort of. Um, very, you know how you use Tigers esque football back in the day that they, they like to move it early. They were playing like obviously when you're up thirty points against the cows, you can afford to do that. But when they started just banging up the middle, one play one two three, and then just shifting, um, Fogarty can play that style, and obviously that's that's AJ Brimson's bread and butter. So if they can move the ball, it'd be hard against Canberra. Um, it could be a, it's going to be a close game. I would slightly go towards Canberra in this one, but I've I could be easily swayed, mate. Well, my best bet of the week is the Titans again. I'm, I'm going Titans, and I'm going to take the I'm going to take the money line as well. I think that's a I'm going to probably have a lick on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want, if you want to hedge your bets a little bit, I think you get three and a half start. But I really I've been high on the Titans. Uh, you know, obviously the first week's performance. It's week one. It was it wasn't even that bad. I just you know Warriors no. played really really well and and they completed really well in those conditions. It was a really hot game. There was a bit of hype about the Titans. I'm still really high on the Titans. I just wanted – watching that game, I think one of the – you know, the pack gets a lot of a lot of raps and we talk about him a fair, time, fair bit. But two of the most complete wingers in the competition right now, if you were like bang yes. for buck, yes. Corey Thompson and Anthony oh, Don. Mate, say it again. Mate, I, I, I love watching them too. They do, they do everything right. Like – they're not the flashiest. They're not like there's not a mistake. They're not, they're either, not gonna mate. you know score those big tries and jumping out. But like mate, they they carry well, especially Corey Thompson. Like his carries out of yardage sometimes when he gets behind the ruck. Just take notice of it, and then take notice of the two or three carries. If you if, little things in footy, watch out for those things, mate. The way he gets those sets rolled, and then all of a sudden they're twenty out, and they're able to put in an attacking kick. Little things like that matter at the back end of games, and I uh, can't speak highly. Obviously. Uh, the Raiders are going to be a formidable uh, lineup, but I think, um, and I don't want to give them too much juice because sometimes you know when these teams, I've, I've had a few players that have <laughs> messaged me after seeing it. Even Mudders is more like, "Hey, calm down, hey, calm down." <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think uh, I think the Titans are a younger, better version of the of the Raiders <laughs> coming through. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Like when you go player for player, that they actually have a play very similar player, and they're at home, similar positions. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, again, I'll- and Raiders are banged up from last week. It's hard to argue with someone who would take the time to this one. I, I just tend to lean to – like when it's a coin flip like this, I tend to lean towards class naturally, like guys that have sort of been there, done that. I think Whiten and Williams are, are better than Boyd and Fogarty. Yep. That's, and, and I think the best hooker on the field is, is obviously Josh Hodgson. So Was that Lucky? Oh, it's just the one that's, that's coming one down. That's okay, yeah, sweet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Even even so, I still like uh, I still like Titans. That's not going to change my opinion. No, nah, that's fine. Just off the back of what you said about Corey Thompson, and Anthony Don, what it also allows them to do is guys like Philip Sammy and Patrick. Philip Sammy is nice. They have great carries in them, and yeah. and when Corey Thompson's the quickest player of the ball in the fucking comp because he just jumps to his feet, and Don always finds his front too. It gives those boys to get in behind the ruck, and they can fucking bang, man. So. Um, oh, this is going to be an awesome game. Yeah, this um, is my game of the week. I'm really looking yeah, forward to it. Really Even though it's my best it. bet, like because I'm I'm just really high on the Titans. I think it's going to be a really good game, and uh, well, it go. could come down to the last five or ten minutes. I agree, and I'll go Raiders. All right, uh, the Knights got their first L when Scope jumped on them, beauty. And uh, <laughs> but uh, we did. I did eventually stick and hold on to the Dragons last week, so. Um, we're going to be gassing him up on 10 in the can so tonight, Mudders, so we don't have, need to do too much. But just all around, one guy I want to gas up – oh, a couple of guys I want to gas up uh, in the forwards because that was a big question mark for me at the start of the year. Uh, Josh Kerr playing edge back row in the right edge. I didn't think he was going to be mobile enough to be playing in the on the edge. He's playing really – Really good footy. He's he, defensively a lot sounder than what I thought he was because, you know, sometimes those players in the middle take a bit of a transition. What it's what is helping him out, uh, what's been a positive for him is that he's got a bit more juice in the league. So when, mm. when he gets into attack, sometimes it's, you know, you don't even have to give him, like take it right to the line. He's that big of a, a player. A bit earlier. A bit early, give him some early ball and he's doing really well. And uh, old Maxi Bond mutters, Blake Laurie. So if people don't know, um, <laughs> Blake Laurie, you know, he loves all of our stuff and 
he loves it. he calls Normie Mudders all the time out of all the boys, but um, Normie said to that, that Blake Laurie's nickname is Maxi Bon Mudders, and he and Maxi Bon nearly got over for a meeting on the weekend too. <laughs> he should have. He, well. he tried to sell it. He tried yeah. to sell it his best. So I, I was I would have been we, stoked. If we he gave over. him. I said I gave him a bit of a shout out on Monday as well. He's, oh, yeah. he's playing out of his world. Like we we said coming into the season that we thought that pack was. You know, there was some nice. Obviously, Paul Vaughan and Tarek Sims are, are great players, but it was it was not the best pack on paper. Um, but he's been playing out of his fucking skin. So is Andrew McCulloch. So, um, yeah, they're, they're they're looking nice, man. But I want to touch on something that you you threw in the old WhatsApp chat over the weekend. I doubled down on the mag yesterday. I think that Newcastle back row, yep. those three in tandem on form right now, is the best back row in the competition. Frizzell, Barnett, and Connor Watson with that leg speed through the middle. I don't think there's a back row. Obviously, the Roosters got Radley, Tupanua, and Crichton, that yep. stars. But on form right now, I don't think I'd be taking Stole anyone over those three, mate. Yeah, the, the, they're actually uh, – they're, 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 they were going so well – that apart from Connor, even Mitchie Barnett and, and Frizz, they had a couple of errors because they're breaking through tackles like all the time and shit's always happening around them mm. that it's almost they've it's it's almost going too good for them. Like they made so many errors. That was a Tigers didn't didn't beat the Knights. Knights no. beat themselves yeah. on the week. I if you watch that six, game, sixteen errors or something. Um, unbelievable amount no, of a errors. A lot of them were yeah, arm um, through the tackle. Yeah, through the tackle, like beaten players, and then like I think um, mm. even Mitchie Barnett like rolls over the line, gets held up, and just lets go of the ball. Yeah. Like little things like that. Like they're going, they're going so well. But I'm going Dragons. Yeah. So am I. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> two, nice. Two, I was. I, I didn't think. Yeah. I didn't think you'd be. No. Going no. Right. I will. Yeah. No. After I just. Guess I won't up. be betting on it. No. But neither. Sort of neither will I. The dragons. Yeah. I think. I. I don't even quite know why. I just think of the of the two sides straight off the back of last week. The dragons play better, so I'm going to go the dragons. Um, and it's going to be a tough one. I think. Uh, again, it's, the game's going to be decided on on Newcastle. If Newcastle pull their fucking heads in and make no errors and complete well, I think they can win. Um, but if the dragons stay in that fight. I think they've got enough class with with Dufty and obviously Corey. Um, they've, they've they've got enough points in them. It's, it's just going to be that that battle up front. The Tigers did a number on Clemmer, and commentators were obviously talking about it quite a lot throughout the game. If the Dragons can do something similar, I think they can get over him, man. It's yeah. going to be close. Yeah, it's it's a couple of big outs though. Jack Bird and, and Benny Hunt. They're, yeah, they're going to massive. Shout out to Benny Hunt who played sixty minutes of a game with a broken leg. Mm. He. One thing he's one of those bro. he's one of those guys that cops a lot of uh, criticism. You know, obviously the pay packet all, all always comes into it for some of these players. But when a player plays with a broken leg, mate, I have uh, I've come off with a cork before. So, <laughs> <laughs> mate, to, that, that's an unbelievable effort. I think he said some. You know, he's even like real humble about it. Some some guys um, pain thresholds more. I think he goes it was about a seven or eight. <sighs> Fucking hell. Scope starts cramping up and gets yeah. off the field. Yeah. So um, and shout, Clo- out, shout Clune, out to Benny Hunt. Clune, Clune's been there, done that as well. It's not like they're bringing in some rookie who's never played before. So yep. um, massive out. But, yeah, coin flip game. We're both going to Dragons. Though. Interesting. Yeah, I like the value there So for them. But, I, yeah, I'd be picking them. I, I, I wouldn't be betting on them, but yeah. it's not bad value, 275, if you're going to have a little little play at the start. Mm. On to Sunday then, eh? Yeah, start with your boys. My boys. Is that Easter Sunday, is it? Where are they playing? Sydney Cricket Ground? Oh, can I start with – sorry, I just want yeah, to start with one thing. Oh, one thing I want to get out, everyone's been messaging me about the, the Roosters pick. This In no way did I want to be right in in the oh, way – Kiri. Um, yeah, yeah, everyone's going, oh, Kiri's, Kiri's out now. He's a friend of the show. He's come on and done the podcast. Plus, even if I didn't like the guy, I never want to see players, especially, you know, have those long-term injuries, ACLs and whatnot. Um, but – yeah, it's not a way. It's not the way I wanted to win it, but um, it's still, a reality. Still might not, mate. Yeah, and still might not, mate. Like <laughs> we'll see what happens with this yeah. uh, this Sam Walker kid. There's big raps on him, so yeah, yeah, Jacko. yeah. No, look, I'm I'm actually really looking forward to this game. I think um, obviously everyone's been very high on Sam Walker for a long time, it's, and you know, with with respect to my boys, it's, it's probably not the worst team you'd want to come out and, and debut against. Um, they're quite loose defensively at the moment, so. Um, it, Drew Hutchinson's a nice player at six there, a little bit underrated, I think. He's he's kind of one of those Tyrone May sort of hybrids. They just throw him on and let him play. But he's going to be a nice sort of steady influence for them there. I think at 260, I think I'd be going my boys here. 
um, just just because of the injuries to the Roosters. Obviously, Radley is a huge in for them, but the the way the Warriors came home against Canberra and say what you want about them being down X amount of men, I don't care who how many players they're down to score twenty six points in twenty minutes is is fucking impressive, and they're going to ride that high, man. I think Rog is going to is going to come in with that same sort of energy. Marcelo Montoya's first game, obviously. Played for the dogs, um, and the centers there for for you nephew, the four, yeah, keep going, yeah. nephew Peter, who's um he's out for a few weeks. So yeah, look, both sides have the injuries. I think the obviously, well, no, I think obviously the Roosters' injuries are more more severe. They've lost their their best player, I think. Um, so the bias is probably creeping in after I went against the boys and copped a bit of shit. So I'm going to go the Warriors in this one in a close one. Um, I think anyone in that forward pack, whether it's Katoa, Surinan, um, even Bunty, I think is a bit of value for for a meaty. And Murdoch Masil is due as well. I know he got one over the weekend off that hey. four pass, your boy, but um, I can see him crossing as well. So I think there's a bit of, a bit of value in the props and the the back row is there for the Warriors. Um, and I think they I think they squeak past the Roosters, man. I'm with you. I'm on the Warriors. Yes, boy. Yeah, I'm on the Warriors for this. It's come back Good to bite me in the ass getting on the Roosters, but I. Uh, I think, like you said, the, a big part of it is the the twenty six points coming back, the momentum, the confidence that you get out of those. It's like I talked about it with teams that are playing bad. When you pull off those sorts of victories, mm. even despite all the injuries that Canberra had, when you can manage to to pull one of those together, I think that's going to do their confidence the world of good. They'll feel like world beaters all week. They would have had a real nice week of training, and they'll be going on a Roosters team that's a little bit banged up, a little bit down on confidence because they got smacked by the uh, the Rabbitohs. So. I like it, man. I, I'm, I, you know, a lot of these ones. So we've, I've gone a couple of underdogs now to, to finish off the round, but so have I, yeah. Because and the, and the, they have been happening through throughout throughout the first three rounds. So yeah, I'm I'm going to be on the Warriors, but it's another thing, thing I wouldn't be betting on. Uh, I'm really just going to sit back and it's another game that I'm probably going to enjoy sitting back and kicking the feet up and watching it over the weekend. Sunday's well, I might hit along, eh? What's this? What's the Sydney cricket ground like to watch footy? Awful, awful. Yeah, yeah. beauty. Yeah, don't not, go to it. Not it's, too, it's too. It's too. What? It's, it's, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if for, for other people. Uh, I didn't even like playing at it. It feels real weird because of the the dimensions, dimensions, and all that sort of stuff. It feels yeah. like the, the the fans are so far away that like it's One a prestigious the- ground. So when yeah. you like the warm up and all that, that's grouse. Like you go into locker rooms, you look around at the history of the the ground and all that, and like it's, it's pretty cool seeing the the cricket. Um, the locker rooms yeah, and all that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff, and you see a few baggy greens flat ground, but like actually playing on the field, it's it feels weird because it feels like you're sideways or whatever. And I think I played the the one game. Oh, I played a twenties game, but the one first grade game I played is that that famous game where Cherry throws the the ball into my head. Have you seen that? Which nah, I'm sure Cherry, you'll Cherry, find it. <laughs> Cherry tries to throw the cutout, and he and he falcons me right in the face. So yeah, look, I'm surprised you haven't got that already. <laughs> Throwing myself under the bus, saved in the but um, yeah, I, I didn't like playing at it. Okay, well, I won't go then. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. I'll sit. I'll sit on the couch. And yeah, sit on the couch and crack kick the feet up. We might have a couple of beers at home. Yeah, gun. Last right. game. Last game. Uh, Parra versus Tigers. Is it Parra versus Tigers? Lukey's undefeated Eels up against the Tigers. Um, obviously, a bit of a rivalry game here. I, I, I think. I think Parramatta will do this one. Um, it's on Monday too, isn't it? Monday. Yeah, these ga- these games oh, cool. are actually normally pretty. Yeah, uh, they are pretty fun to watch. If- this is uh, this Normie, Normie used to love playing on the Easter Monday. Easter Monday is a grouse, yeah. bro. Like, even just the whole um, the theater of it all, yeah. the games, they normally get pretty big crowds. Hopefully, the no restrictions as well. Yeah. The one thing um, about it is it was supposed to be at Bank West. I would have gone and watched it at Bank West on Monday. Lukey, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But still, like, they're not going to get anything. Cl- playing at home, pl- playing at home, which is another thing. Like, when you can fit 80,000 in, there's only like 10 to 15. Mm. It just doesn't hit right. But. You know, sometimes they can get about thirty to forty uh, thousand at the at the Easter Monday. So hopefully it packs out or gets to half capacity at least. That'd be sick, yeah. The Paris sort of seem like they seem like the team that with a, with a packed house they'd fucking put on a show as mm. well. Um, I like I like them last week. I like the they played with a little bit more composure, which we've obviously been calling for for a while with um, with Dylan Moses and Moses obviously recovered from that head, head knock. He's been named. He haven't been scratched yet, so he's a big in for them. Um, I think they win. Um, these games are always close, so I wouldn't be fucking having a look at, at the line or anything like that. Um, but I think they, I think they get the job done. And the old makeshift center of doom, Murata Niakore, just keeps fucking doing it. So <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking killing it. So um, yeah, I think Parry get it done, man. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me. But I really oh, like Parry as well. No, oh, I really like Parry as well. Yeah. And 
Uh, so uh, they're one of those teams that I try not like because I always talk up the Bird Gang as well. But I've got obviously got a soft spot for Para, but they always because of the history in that and what's happened in the past. And Lukey's smiling off camera. I try not to get too high on the Eels because I feel like they've let me down in the past. If say all the Eels fans will know about this, but I think this is a really nice game. I think uh, playing at Homebush if they get a big crowd, they can really put on a show. Where's and our boy? I'm, I'm um, going to be molting uh, there. I'm going to be molting up uh, the just for my own personal account. Yep. I'll be going para minus the start, mm. and I know I've said stay away from the Tigers game, so I hope this fucking <laughs> doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Clip, clip that, Luke. Clip but that, I'm going to I'm going to multi up my my two best. I've got my best is the Titans, and then I'm going to multi it up with uh, Paris. So I'll have a little single bet on the on the money line for for Titans mm. in the personal account, and then I'll have. Uh, Titans with the start and Para minus the start for my own little account because you've got the multi of Doom. You might, so you with, might be swinging me now. Yeah. Yeah, I do have the multi of Doom. Shall I rip straight into it? Let's eh? get we'll into wrap it. up the show. Let's get um, into it. I'm going to stay away from the Thursday night game just because I, I hate when the multi gets blown up on a Thursday. So <laughs> I'm at least going to let the weekend well, roll in. No, like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. Remember when Ice talked because we were doing, remember we first started at SBC and he's like, um, let, the, let the punters go first uh, because. You know, if you blow it in the in the first couple of races, I think in the first week I blew it in the first couple of races, and then we're done. But like a couple of weeks later, there was I was I was back in, and I wanted to go this thing that I I thought was a good thing, and then it, it salutes at three dollars, and mm. you stay away from it just because yeah you're trying to say, whatever your best bets are, I reckon stick to your guns, man, and and, and be solid on it. All but, right, all right, Justin, I'm I'm, I'm on them, bro. Look, yep. I'm I'm gonna go. Um, I'm taking taking mutters and the dragons. Um, yeah. There's good value there. The, the line's seven and a half. Yeah. Um, so if you want to play it safe, I like seven and a half. Okay. But I like them, man. I think yeah. I think there's I think they can so get what the do you job do? done. What are you going to put in seven and a half, or are you going to put in the head? I'm going to go head to head. So I'm chasing odds there. Woo. I'm chasing odds there. Um, my best bet, like I said, is the sharks. Yeah. Um, and I'll take the points on that. I think I think it was six and a half minus six and a half. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to put it out now. As you you put it up. So dragons head to head. Um, um, I'll give you the odds too, so we yeah get this up uh, NRL matches. So we're going. The Dragons head to head, 275. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's jam. All right, you like the Sharks as well. And what are the, what's the points that I'm taking on the Sharks? The there? money line, this is on a sports bet we're looking at because that's where our kitty is. Mm. Minus eight and a half. Yep, like it. Lovely. Yep. Dollar 90 minus eight and a half. And then I'm jumping over to the Melbourne game. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a try score in there Ooh. because I think they get a I think they get a few in this one. Yep. Um and after we just missed the rocks and diamonds and self, I'm getting back on him. Lovely. Justin Playing two dollars. Two bucks. Two bucks. Top me up. So I'm gonna jump on Justin Olam there. Yep. He's he's been he's been a, he's been good to us. And we're gonna boost that up. We're gonna boost that up to eleven seventy. Oh there you go. That's a bit of jam. That's retirement that's, money there, Lukey. That's close to a three K collect there, Jacko. So Holy fuck, man. This would be big time. Lukey, we could buy this place out, bro. Holy shit. Yeah, so that, that that's the multi of doom. I'm gonna go the dragons head to head. I'll take the money line on the sharks. Um, and I'll jump on Justin Olam. Oh, did you take right. money line on Sharks? Yeah, what's that? No, no, I went, I went the line. Yeah, the minus, line. Sorry, oh, sorry yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. money line is the dollar thirty. Dollar thirty. Yeah, 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 no, the line on the Sharks. So, yeah, so you're saying they're going to cover by seven, seven or more? I think they'll do a bit more than that. So, yeah, no worries, man. Beautiful. That's where I'm at. You like it? Rookie in the vet signing out. All good, baby. That was gun. Gun. Let's do it, bro.